Are you ready for the top 12? Just how big could we get with just two people? How is this going to help me in the future? People are creating so much content, but quantity wasn't really a solution. You have to be authentic, you have to be passionate about it. That's, that's wrong with it, right? Oh, awesome. Uh, top three people you follow or study and why? People that I follow that are, are very inspirational. Um, there's one, and this is going to sound creepy, um, but I promise it's not. I've been following her since she was 17, um, but her name's Demi Bagby. Uh, she has like 2 million followers on Instagram, but she's this girl that like broke her back when she was 14, uh, got into CrossFit, and is now like arguably one of the strongest females that I have seen in like wow. a competitive scene. And she I'm like going can to look do, her up right now. Yeah, she can do just crazy stuff, and she posts videos of her workouts, and they're just like beyond what I can ever comprehend doing in my lifetime. And she's yeah. doing it as now a nineteen year old. Um, but I've just I've followed her journey for two years, so I'm a little more emotionally attached to her now. Um, but she is great. Um, huge fan of her. There's another uh, YouTube comedian, Laura Cleary. Um, she recently came out with a book called Idiot that I still have to read and find. I haven't found it since being in Australia. But mm -hmm. um, she was like your typical actress. Um, you know, she lived in L.A. for a while. But she, she started as like a coke and heroin addict. Like she was falling apart. Like she constantly posts pictures of her just like super skinny and super out of it and addicted to drugs and all this stuff. Um, and she got sober, I want to say like 10 or so years ago, um, maybe not even that long. Um, but since she got sober, she has become like super successful. She's comedian on YouTube. She is also a very large Instagram following and, uh, it's just been great. She's got like a kid now she's married and you really kind of just see the whole full circle of, of yeah, her life. Full journey. And it's, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's inspiring to see the fact that she came from like this crazy background where she really just kind of drove herself into the ground emotionally and, and, and spiritually and, and all these things and, and was able to come out on the other side even more successful. So that's just a cool story. And, and she's, she's funny, you know, she, she puts out like videos of, of some of her stuff and, and it's great. Um, but yeah, I guess um, the third person, I'm just kind of trying to rack my brain. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Katie Couric. Um, she was really my inspiration when I started as a journalist. And I haven't followed her as much recently, but I've always kind of looked up to her story. And, and, you know, whether it's her personal life, you know, losing a husband to cancer, raising kids, and, and being a successful journalist of, in the midst of all of that. Um, to really just kind of, you know, that's something that I always it's aspired to be as a journalist. And even though I'm no longer on that track, um, I still really admire her story. And I admire the way that she does storytelling, because that's a constant that I've always tried to um, really implement in my work is the storytelling aspect. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you go to the website, and you look at my tab, you'll see that a lot of the people that I still talk to, um, I really still try to make that the focus, even if there's like branding and, and other stuff that you need to incorporate, I make sure that no matter what the storytelling is there. Um, and she was really my first inspiration and in understanding how to do that tactfully. Three people. Okay. Number one, Charles Eisenstein, hundred <laughs> percent. Charles Eisenstein. He was very important on my journey. He's someone who's able to dissect exactly what's going on in Western um, culture or modern culture and where we went wrong and what's, what needs to change. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if anything I said resonated, look into Charles Einstein, I guess right now there's this guy called Jordan Bates. He's someone I actually ran into from my startup journey. So I met someone at Sydney Startcon. Is that what it's mm -hmm. called? Start. Yeah. 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 I actually, so that's a funny story. I, I hacked my way into getting free VIP tickets. So I was on this, <laughs> I was on a yacht with like, um, with all the, all the speakers and they were all international. And then I was wearing my startup shirt and <laughs> I was going up to all of them, getting their numbers. And I was like, wow, this is great. And then one of the girls I met, she's like, awesome. Um, she introduced me to him or at least told me about him. And then I've been following him for a while. I like getting his emails. His name's Jordan Bates. Jordan Bates. He runs a site called High Existence and mm -hmm. just kind of about life. 
And mm. yeah, he calls it cra- helping, I guess, helping people craft the most exciting life. Bill Plotkins is a depth psychologist. Um, he wrote a book called Soulcraft, mm-hmm. it's basically about um, psychedelic experiences, but completely without drugs. <laughs> so if that interests Interesting. you, Bill Plotkins, yeah, yeah. Um, very. That's what got me into this. Well, of course, Steve Jobs is one that mm. is kind of always there. <laughs> um, for reasons that people already know him, so I don't think we need to go into why. Um, I've personally always been a huge fan of uh, Ed Williams. Ed Williams is the uh, he was the founder of Twitter, and okay. he was a blogger before Twitter, and then founder of Twitter. He's the founder of Medium. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ed Williams is pretty much the father of of uh, kind of like content systems yeah. uh, on the internet. So I've traditionally for a long time I've been following him, and I think he's a very a very thought, thought, thoughtful person that you know that I like. Um, like I mentioned, this company Drift in Boston has uh, has some really cool people leading the company. Uh, the founder of the founder of Drift, David Cancel, uh, he's definitely inspiration. Uh, this is his fifth company, so wow. uh, he's learned a lot about the journey and and um, he's definitely someone I follow. Um, I don't know, and then I have a few more like maybe not well-known people, uh, but you know the, the role of mentors I think is very important to you. you yes, know, people, you might not know them; they're not famous, but no. uh, developing mentors locally, I think that's uh, you know pretty important very for important me as well. Yeah. So in terms of in terms of the vintage side of of my life and the vintage clothes, I think um, Jackson from Vintage Kit. Um, I don't know if you've ever checked him out on Instagram. No. He's sort of like, he's like the godfather of selling vintage clothes on Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Mark from Wacky Vintage is another one uh, and Dan from Dan Street Vintage. Um, all three of those guys, when I first sort of started this up, I would reach out to and and ask um, a million one questions and really pester them too much. Um, <laughs> but they were very open and honest with how they ran their businesses and um, gave me some some great advice coming up. So um, I definitely recommend checking those people out. And if you like my vintage stuff, then I've got no doubt that you'll, you'll love their stuff that they're selling too. Uh, one has been Warren Buffett to a mm-hmm. degree, uh, just because I love like the, the long-term thinking and the folksy uh, feeling of, uh, of Warren Buffett. And so I think there's a lot to learn there from, you know, really doing your homework and thinking long-term and, uh, living a simple lifestyle. I mean, like if, if you look at the lifestyle that he projects, he's not flashy. Hmm. Um, uh, last I checked, he's fairly wealthy dude. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, yet, yet he maintains a very, you know, he, he had something in one of his books I read that he referred to as the inner scorecard. So he follows, he's following an inner scorecard. He's not trying to keep up with anybody else's external scorecard. He has a set of values that he's trying to live by and that guides his thinking. And he's not, um, you know, fixated on anybody else's notion of success or whatever. So I, I thought that was very powerful. Um, you know, one, one person who I've been, um, uh, inspired by outside of my parents, um, which it goes without saying, um, mm-hmm. that they, they have been enormous role models in my life. Uh, my mother for teaching me empathy and, uh, my, my dad for teaching me all about, um, you know, as he would say, focus on the people and the ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that, uh, that, that notion that, you know, the, the, the reward will follow, yeah. you know, uh, so uh, I'm going to throw my, my parents in there as a, a bundle, <laughs> uh, nice. but, um, you know, uh, uh, Steve jobs is, uh, certainly someone who I've uh, admired, uh, along a certain axis in, mm-hmm. in terms of his dedication to product and, uh, and also, uh, Larry Olson as well, even though, uh, we have very different styles or viewpoints uh, or, or experiences around family and things like that. He is an amazing communicator 
and um, and he's amazingly interested in technology. So um, I didn't work directly for him, but had the good fortune of being in a lot of meetings with him and, mm-hmm. and interacting him with that way, in a product way, and just seeing someone who's like truly enthusiastic about technology and what it can accomplish. And, um, and his, his way of delivering a message very simply with a, quite a bit of repetition, but a lot of entertainment, um, I, I think were very valuable lessons to me. So he was a great communicator. And, um, you know, so those are uh, three, four-ish. Um, it would be, I, I, I always refer to like older books that I had from, 10 years ago, mm. and it's, this, it's this author, his name is uh, Robert Ringer, Robert Ringer, R-I-N-G-E-R. And I don't think he's done any new books. I think they've updated some of his stuff so that if you go online, uh, maybe he has a website or something like that. But I have, mm. uh, I think, three of his books. And anytime I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, either not motivated or something like that, I just pull out one of his books and it's just just the way that he explains like that perseverance. Um, mm. So it's around uh, personal development, personal growth, would you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like self-improvement, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mindset. Uh, one of his, those sort of things. Mindset. And, and one of the books is called uh, million dollar habits. So it's mm-hmm. not necessarily related to money, but just like things that, you know, you just do in your life that allows you to be more successful. So I would, mm-hmm. that would be one thing that I really go back to quite, quite frequently. Mm-hmm.